Hello everybody and welcome back to another reaction here on my channel. I'm going to assume that probably a lot of you are new to my channel because I don't normally do videos like this. So if you're unfamiliar, normally on my channel, what I tend to focus on are reacting to slash reviewing uh, full length albums, usually brand new albums that have just come out and it can be music spanning all genres. And just very recently, I've started going back and doing maybe a few classic albums that have somehow skipped my um, I guess are, aren't a part of my musical repertoire or whatever, as you will. But, uh, just recently I did a few, uh, I actually reacted to a few individual songs and I had a lot of fun doing that. And I don't know how those are going to do on my channel. I haven't uploaded those or anything yet, but today is a wonderful and glorious day. Today is in flames day because the brand new in flames album comes out. So I'm very excited for that, and I'm going to be uh, recording a reaction to that in a little while. But first, I thought I woke up and I read the first thing I read on Facebook on my Facebook feed was new Linkin Park, new Paramore and new Pierce the Veil or something, which not a fan of theirs. I don't really even know who Pierce the Veil is, but I love Linkin Park and I they, I've been seeing Mike Shinoda posting things on social media the last few days. And I believe it's all sort of leading up to the 20th anniversary uh, of Meteora, the Linkin Park's second album, Meteora. And so I saw today they released a new song and it has a music video and everything. It looks like it's animated. So I'm really excited to check this out. So that's what we're going to be reacting to in this video. But no, coming up here on my channel, I think I'm also going to maybe try to find a Paramore single and listen to that. Um, and I'll get more into that in the Paramore video. So if you enjoy Paramore, check out my channel for that. I don't know what order I'm going to be posting these. But um, also, I want you to know, uh, I have my setup a little bit different here. I'm a little bit wider maybe than I normally would. So I was going to try to like, <laughs> I was going to try to to scooch in a little bit. But uh, I have my set set up this way because I'm doing something very special for my channel leading up to the release of the brand new Metallica album, which I think is called 72 Seasons in April. I had one of my friends who's a big metal head come over and we did a double reaction. He had obviously heard this album many times over the course of his life, but we did a double reaction to the album of or to the Metallica album, Ride the Lightning. It's something that I have never heard before, which is absolutely crazy because I also consider myself a metalhead. I'm a big fan of metal, all sorts of metal, but I like all sorts of uh, music, all sorts of genres. You can see on my channel here the different types of things that I react to. But um, just know on my channel, I plan to react to, uh, we're, we're going to skip Metallica's first album, which I think is called Kill Em All. Uh, which I've never heard, but if these reactions go really well, maybe I'll go back and do that one too. But I'm planning to release relax reactions, again, to myself, having never heard any of these albums, um, Ride the Lightning, uh, Master of Puppets, and, and Justice for All, leading up to the release of 72 Seasons, if that's, if that's the right album title. Uh, I've heard the Black Album, and I love the Black Album. It was one of the very first albums I ever bought myself with my own money way back when I was in probably junior high or maybe even high school. But uh, that's something I'm very much looking forward to. And as of right now, I've recorded the Ride the Lightning. And so that's why I have my set kind of set up like this with my camera in the position that it is. And I know you probably don't care about that, but I just wanted to shout that out, that that's something that I have coming up on my channel that I'm very, very, very excited for. The Ride the Lightning reaction went really well. We actually recorded for over two and a half hours. And I'll try to cut as much of it as I can. But um, we spent a long time talking about my expectations, what I know about Metallica just from pop culture. Obviously, I've heard Black Album, heard a lot of stuff. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Metallica too much here. I want to talk about and get into Linkin Park. But I just wanted to let you know that's something that's going to be on my channel. So if you're a big fan of Metallica heavy metal music in general, I guess, uh, know that that's something that's going to be coming out on my channel. Think about checking out my channel for that. Like I said, I don't know the, the, um, the order in which I'll be posting these videos. It's a lot easier for me to post something like this than it is to go and edit and do a whole two and a half hour video. But like I said, those are the videos I normally have on my channel listening to a full album. So, uh, with regards to this video, this will be only the second or third if you count the second one, which didn't work. But anyway, this will only be the first video I've ever done like this, reacting to something that is a video. I'll be watching it on my screen. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see and hear everything with me as long as I have everything set up all right in Streamlabs. 
but uh, hopefully this audio is able to be included in the video. If not, I'll have to unfortunately upload this video with no audio and you'll have to sync uh, your video up with me, but I'll try to go through without pausing and see what happens. Uh, that's generally how I try to do my reactions to full albums. So um, in terms of link, so I guess before I get too far ahead of myself, just know I'm trying to do everything as well as I can, but we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear everything with me, but if not, you know, bear with me, I, I guess just try to, I guess, bear with me. So in terms of Linkin Park, I'm a big fan of Linkin Park. I actually have all of their albums, and I was going to bring them downstairs where I record my videos, but I was like, nah, it's not worth it for a little 10-minute video or however long this ends up being. But know that I have all their albums on a CD, and I actually have several copies of a couple of their albums that I found used over the years for like 90 cents or whatever at Goodwill just because, you know, it's nice to have an extra copy of a really great album. Um, I haven't loved everything that Linkin Park has always released. However, I am one of those rare people that really does like some of their music that other people think is their worst. For example, I think that if you're talking about the most consistent album, I would probably say that that's Meteora, Meteora or Hybrid Theory, of course. But I think that maybe my favorite Linkin Park album is actually A Thousand Suns, which is a lot of people's least favorite Linkin Park album or one of the least favorite, or at least least high, highly regarded. And actually, I really, 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 really love their last album as well. I think it's called One More Light or something like that. I haven't looked at that, looked at it for a while, but um, no guitars or whatsoever really pretty much on that album, just an electronic album, but the songs are phenomenal. Uh, Mike and Chester were firing on all cylinders for that album, so I absolutely love that album. But I think maybe my favorite album of theirs, because it's so different and so experimental but at the same time i love the sounds the sonic quality the production of it is absolutely fantastic which on my channel here i talk about audio producing stuff a lot i talk about the way things sound how they got the sounds they got why did the artists choose to put those sounds together how those things were recorded um and so for that reason i really love a thousand suns and um i really think that Linkin Park's entire catalog is really interesting and fascinating uh and if you're watching this video you're probably a big fan of Linkin Park but just know that um yeah, I'm a big fan of all their stuff, their entire very wide array of genres that they tackle throughout all of their albums. Um, really enjoy all of that stuff. Uh, Chester's death when he passed away was probably the most impacted by a, a celebrity death, I guess, if you will, or like a person I don't really know personally. Probably affected me more than any other death like that that I've experienced in my lifetime. And, you know, I never would have said that Linkin Park was my favorite band growing up or anything like that, but... I can remember the very first time that I heard the very first song of theirs that I did hear, which was One Step Closer, and it was at a live WCW pro wrestling event, I think way back in uh, either late 1999, maybe early 2000, maybe 2001, I'm not sure. I know that album came out, I think, in 2000, so it probably was in 2000, but anyway, it was at a WCW event, and I remember hearing it over the speakers just before the show started and thinking, wow, that's a really cool song, and then, of course, it exploded and blew up everywhere and was on all these soundtracks and and I, uh, all those that great stuff. And But anyway, I, I've just always followed Linkin Park. And when Chester passed, Chester passed away, it was it was difficult. I mean, I was very sad and depressed for several days, went back and listened to all the Linkin Park stuff. And at the time, I was working at a recording studio in Omaha, Nebraska, and we had this room set up in the back for, uh, for mastering. And so I sat in this mastering suite that we had with these very, very, very outrageously expensive speakers and just closed the door and everything was soundproofed. And I listened to their entire catalog and just, you know, really felt the death of Chester. And so it's very sad that that happened. And I've enjoyed the Grey Days albums that have come out. The one that came out last year, I don't think was as good as their their first one. But, you know, I, I guess I guess all I'm trying to say is love Linkin Park. I followed them forever. They're a very special band to me, though I never would have considered them to be one of my favorite bands of all time, but definitely up there. So uh, that's my feelings on Linkin Park. Let me know how you feel about them in the comments. Obviously, let me know what you think about this song. And let's just get, get into it and listen to it and see. Like I said, bear with me as I'm getting through my technical things here because I may not have everything set up, though I did a test video before this. So... Let me scoot over a little bit here. And I believe all I have to do is this and this. And let us listen to
Ooh. This sounds very much like something from Meteora, or even, well, probably more Meteora. Love the drum beat. Now, I believe this was something that Mike found recently. Uh, oh, I love the animation style. That's very cool. Very anime, but almost like cell shaded sort of style. Which, in the anime style, was obviously very important for them. Oh, I'm gonna probably talk over this the whole time, by the way, so. Beware, be ready for that. Okay, you can definitely hear some auto tune there on Chester's vocals, but these are probably unfinished vocals. A lot of beef to the guitars there, that's really nice. Drum beats great too. Dude, that's a cool shot. Whoa. Chester's voice was doubled there, it sounded like. Very simple musical arrangement. You know, just some string pad and string patch in the background there on the keyboards. A little bit of a bass, but not too much. This is definitely reminiscent of Caught in the Undertow. Like, this is very much like the first two Linkin Park albums. And that kick sounds fantastic. Now Chester's voice double here. Like the distorted vocals or the distorted drums there. So that was probably Mike doing doing the harmony vocal, maybe. This these characters look like something that may already existed. Let me know if this is part of like an existing property for a video game or a, or a manga or some sort of an anime or something. I would guess it's all original, though, but it's very cool. Very simple, straightforward. Probably a copied and pasted chorus vocals, I would assume. Okay. Okay, so, so, ha! Okay, this is interesting. Like I said, I, I don't normally do reactions like this, so I don't really know what to say now. However, um, I liked it. I thought that it sounded like something that was definitely like a B-side or something from Meteora. Um, I loved the drums. When they came in during the chorus, I really felt the punchiness of the drums there. Um, I really think that the... You know, it, it was very much of the Linkin Park formula for Meteora with Chester singing the verses, uh, very clean, and then screaming, not screaming, but singing the choruses with a lot more, um, a lot more distortion in his vocals, a lot more intensity. And like I said, every chorus I believe was probably copied and pasted, the, maybe not, but probably copied and pasted the best chorus performance that they had from Chester. Uh, and it was doubled, which was nice. And if you have imperfect vocals like those were, I mean, you could definitely hear some auto-tune and things in there at certain moments. But again, I, I personally don't have any issue with that. Understanding what this is and where it's coming from, um, I'm happy that Mike, I'm assuming Mike Shinoda did all of this. Um, I'm happy that he took the files and made everything sound as good as they could. It definitely sounded professionally produced and all that, but it did sound a little bit more simplistic than the average like Linkin Park song arrangement. Uh, but again, it's totally understandable because of where this is coming from. And we're all very lucky to be getting these posthumous releases with Chester singing on them. So uh, I don't begrudge the production or anything like that at all. I think it sounded like Mike did a great job. Like I said, when those drums kicked in each each chorus, I, there was probably an extra little, uh, maybe like an 808 sort of style, low frequency kick at the beginning of each chorus because it really felt punchy and boomy. Um the bass guitar, I really didn't notice at all throughout the song. Maybe there wasn't even any bass guitar. Um, 
there was certainly bass. Whether it was bass guitar, I'm not sure. Uh, the guitars that were in the chorus were really nice, and there was a lot of low end to them as well, which if a bass isn't necessarily a featured instrument of your song, you can you can have the benefit of including more low to mid frequencies in a lot of other sounds because it's not going to compete with that bass. And again, I'm sure that there was some sort of like a synth bass or something in there, especially during the chorus. But And you, I could hear a few bass notes during the verse as well, though whether or not the actually bass was played on them, I don't know. I mean, Mike could have played whatever he wanted on there. But, uh, but regardless of that, I thought the drum sounded great. There was a lot of drum production on the, uh, on the song, like all Linkin Park songs have had basically for their whole career. Uh, lots of distorted drums, drum loops, drum samples, things like that. And it all worked really well together. Um, I would assume that the drums and the drum samples and the drum patterns in that entire song, none of it was actually played drums. I would assume that it was all probably just programmed drums. Whether Mike found these files and kind of created the song around it more recently, or they had some of these this stuff demoed out from back in the day, I don't even know. It could be that, uh, you know, Mike just found these vocals and created a song around them. I'm not too positive. It it definitely gave me vibes of, of Meteora, though, and I think that it it definitely sounded of something that came from that era. So that's really nice and really special. And if this is something that was made in four and is going to be included on some sort of a special 20th anniversary edition of Meteora, that's really cool. Um, definitely not my favorite Linkin Park song of all time. But again, I feel like we have to take into consideration what it is, where it's coming from, and... We're just lucky that we get to have these songs with Chester singing on them so many years even after he passed away. So, um, yeah, I'll say those are my thoughts. I don't have too much else to say. Uh, I don't really know how to do these kind of videos. Like I said, I'll tend to, I tend to talk forever, and my videos are normally like well over an hour long. So I'm just going to end it here and say, you know, I talked a little bit at the beginning of the video about all the stuff on my channel. If any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to poke around and see if you can find anything interesting. Subscribe and maybe keep uh, keep an eye on the channel if you want to see those Metallica videos, maybe the Paramore video. Like I said, depending on the, the order that I release these. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening to me with some Lincoln listening with me to some Lincoln Park today. I got new Inflames coming up later today, which I'm really excited for. Uh, Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and maybe I'll see you in another video. We'll see. Thank you very much.